Hello and welcome to today's video. If you watched the last installment, you know I killed the processor board that was in the uh, this uh, air-cooled uh, DMOC645. Had a uh, put it in bootloader mode. Thought that would tri-state the uh, SPI bus. It didn't, and I uh, popped it. Turns out the uh, microcontroller can only do four milliamps per pin max, and my microcontroller can do twenty-ish. So it popped them. Um, so I put out a little classified ad on the do-it-yourself electric vehicle list. And I ended up with uh, purchasing a few spare boards. Um, fortunately, they're, they look to be out of a uh, DMOC 145. So it's going to have a lot of differences um, than, you know, using another air-cooled one. Fortunately, Colin Kidder sent in another air-cooled one. So I've got an air-cooled board in here right now. Um, actually, the last time I powered it up, you can see it's, it says it's the ver uh, box type doesn't match, which is what we're looking for. i got to change this from a 17 to an 18, and hopefully then it'll fire up. Um, also, uh, Jack from EVTV sent me a whole nother DMOC 645 air-cooled version. Uh, I have a box in here. I haven't taken it out yet. I wanted to make sure I got this working with the um, board first, placement board. Um, so one of the things I did is we come down in here. I've got my little board. Uh, it's hooked up. I have one, uh, 1K resistors on all of the um, inputs and outputs on the SPI bus to prevent <laughs> drawing. So that limits me to 3.3 milliamps, which is below their 4 milliamp uh, absolute max if there's a bus contention. You can see I've clip lead it in still, soldered some wires onto the uh, to the flash memory chip. I'm trying to do it in situ. It's probably, uh, we'll see. I, it's not, I don't think it's going to work though. I think I'm going to have to unsolder or lift the pins on the uh, chip here. I'll show you what's going on. But So you can see uh, this is the JTAG port and I have a jumper between pin 2 and 5 which forces the micro into reset mode actually just halts execution so because that's the first thing it does when it powers up uh, it doesn't have a chance to actually set the output states so when i flip it on you can see it doesn't this screen's just static it's not booted it doesn't run uh, execution is halted and that's what we want so right now all the inputs are tri-state so i've got this all hooked up and we can uh, go ahead and run this. So, problem is I got to download the code to it. I'm running in debug mode, and I'm not actually trying to modify it yet because I'll show you here. Actually, we can run. We'll run this. Start a new capture. Hit run here. And it's got a little blinky LED on there, so it, it blinked really quick. It already read it. So uh, if we go back over here, we can stop this. And we can see what it read. So here's the data. And this is what's interesting. So this is my initialization sequence, right? And uh, it's checking to see if it's ready, and it's never ready. It's always returning back data. And the reason it's returning back data is, um, so it's tri-stated. I can now read the chip. The problem is they didn't put any pull-ups on any of the other chip selects on the board. So I'm getting data from, so even though I'm chip selecting just this guy, and clocking and then sending out, I'm reading the status register, and I'm getting back <laughs> random values here. This should be zero. So finally I got a status register read that came back zero, right? So then my code starts executing read request address zero zero zero, and then starts clocking data but this is the wrong data. It's actually data from 
real-time clock calendar chip, uh, whatever other SPI chips they have on there, because they didn't put pull-ups on the chip select lines. So, unfortunately, they're all talking simultaneously while I'm trying to read it, which makes it very, very difficult. Uh, I guess you could randomly power cycle it. If you look, it actually does come up. See how there's LEDs on? It comes up random. Like, every time. If I power cycle it, you'll see that these lights will come up differently every time. Because they don't... It's like they don't even initialize anything. See? Now you got a yellow one over there. Both the red and green are on. Let's turn it off. Probably have to wait longer. But they come up in different configurations based on that. But unfortunately, it doesn't look like uh, I'm going to be able to just halt the micro like I was planning on doing. And then uh, reading out the uh, flash memory chip and then writing it back. Because everybody else is still on the SPI bus. So, I, I don't know. I have to think about it. It might just be... I mean, the problem is it's, the boards are conformally coated. And it's a very hard conformal coating. Um, you actually really have to scrape pretty good to get... Um, to be able to solder one of the pins. You have to scrape through it with your soldering iron. And I think it's going to be really, really difficult to actually pull the flash memory chip off. Because it will essentially be glued to the board. Um, without getting something, uh, I don't know what kind of conformal coating it is, so I don't know what dissolves it. Alcohol does not dissolve it. It, um, it definitely takes a lot more than that. Maybe acetone? I hate to cover the board in acetone, but I don't know. Uh, might just have to lift the pins on it, but you risk damaging the chip when you do that. So, I don't know. I'm going to think about it. It might be easier. Maybe we just go find every SPI chip on here and add a pull-up to the chip select lines. I don't know. <laughs> Any suggestions? Let me know. Anyways, thanks for watching.